What's up everybody? So, we're doing a different kind of video. We're going to have a chill video for tonight. We're going to do a Q&A. I asked you guys for questions. You sent me some questions and Heidi sent me a whole list of questions and we're definitely going to answer those. So, we're going to get into this for you guys. I appreciate those of you who sent some questions in and we're going to get to talk about some music. And like I said, Heidi sent a long list of just randomized kind of questions that could be neat for you guys to just know and stuff like that. So we're going to get into this Q&A for you. I love you guys. Thank you for all of the support. As always, you guys know I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and it means the world to me to be able to get on here and inspire some people, use my own journey with freaking down to the self-harm in my younger days. Like, even when I struggled with that, I know every facet of fucking mental health and addiction and the different directions it can go down to the point of physically harming yourself, so... It's a blessing to still be here, to have survived all of those things that I went through in my life, and to be able to provide some inspiration for you guys, to make music for you guys, to react to music for you guys, and to make motivational content for you guys. It's a blessing. It means the whole world to me. So thank you guys. I appreciate you dearly. We're going to get into some questions for you guys. So, Paul A. says... What songs in your formative years piqued your interest to follow a particular artist or band? What sort of sound did you get into? Heavy, punk, soft, etc. All of the above. When it comes to the heavy, punk, soft, etc. I was I grew up with people that listened to all different types of music. Everyone in my family had their own taste in music that was also kind of similar and we would mesh together. But... We, would, we all had, like, genre bands inside of our personalities. We all listened to pretty much every style of music at some point in some form or fashion. So let's start there. Uh, everything, when it comes to just the tempo or the uh, energy of it, the aggressiveness of it, all of it. But for specific songs, I think the first big song that I can really remember vibing with super, super heavy was whenever Korn's first album came out and that song Blind came on. Fucking, I was like one year old headbanging. I, it's like the, one of the first things I ever ran around the house headbanging to was Blind by Korn. And I still listen to that song quite frequently to this day. That album, actually, the whole album in particular, and the Life is Peachy album, the second album as well. I liked both of those extremely much whenever I was young, so that was kind of like a new metal kind of influence, even in my, like, days before I was speaking completely coherently and everything. Kiss as well, Elvis Presley, every song by those artists. Doesn't matter which one. If one of them came on when I was a kid, I was fucking vibe. And I loved both of those, Kiss and Elvis, both. If I had picked a particular song by Kiss, um, I would have to say Detroit Rock City is a big one for me. I would have to say God of Thunder was a big one for me. Beth as well was a huge one that I liked a lot. Uh, even and even like the disco kind of stuff. I was made for loving you and shit like that. I vibed with disco kind of shit as well whenever it came to music. A lot of oldies. Tons of oldies. A shit ton of metal from my dad's side of things. Oh, any kind of metal band you could guarantee that I've probably heard at least one song by them at some point growing up through being around my dad because he would just check out all the new bands and shit that were coming out. Like, even if it wasn't something we necessarily vibed with heavy, we still checked out everything new that came out throughout my whole life. Um, Iron Maiden was a big one for me when I was a kid around, like, maybe like 11 or 12-ish, I started vibing with Iron Maiden Heavy. I liked Machine Head at that particular time as well. Um, 
escape the fate and under oath were two big ones for me and now obviously falling in reverse is what ronnie from escape the fate does now so i was vibing with that even back when ronnie was still in escape the fate uh the song situations was fucking awesome the day i left to the womb is a fucking amazing song that really inspired uh me to want to play get acoustic guitar specifically whenever I was like 13-ish. The Day I Left to the Womb was one song that I wanted to learn how to play, so I picked up a guitar and eventually learned how to play the song. Um, that I could go on forever, fucking when it comes to hip-hop, it was Eminem, Tupac, 50 Cent, all the classics, man. You got Snoop Dogg, you got NWA, Ice Cube. Fucking, I was into the Black Eyed Peas. I liked the Black Eyed Peas when I was younger. I liked a lot of dancey pop kind of music, like Shakira and shit like that. Like even like Fergie, I was into. Whenever her first album came out, when I was I was like twelve or eleven or twelve when that came out. That's the kind of stuff I vibed with growing up. A lot of classic rock, The Doors. Rolling Stones, Motley Crue, like I said, Iron Maiden for the heavy metal side, the more heavy metal side of things. I was super into them. Um, I liked Opeth a lot, Six Feet Under as well when it came to like death metal kind of vibes. The death metal kind of vibes, I liked Opeth and Six Feet Under a whole lot. Gojira, I really was big on the drum inspiration. If you've never listened to Gojira, they got one of the most disgusting disgusting drummers on the planet dude mario duplanter is his name super sick drummer man it inspired me a lot when it came to my drum playing peter chris was initially the drummer that made me want to play drums peter chris from kiss but eventually as i got more into metal it was aaron aaron gillespie from under oath and mario duplanter from gojira inspired my drums the most when it came to vocals, uh, I was super into punk, folk punk and stuff like that. Whenever I first wanted to start singing, that's the bag I was already in with what I listened to and stuff like that. But I was into a lot of like folk music like Janis Joplin and stuff like that. Just the classic blues tunes, The Doors, bands like that inspired my vocals a lot. A lot of metal influence on the vocals as well. I used to scream a lot. Um, I don't scream in my music now. I don't... I haven't tried in a long time, but there oh, actually, I put it, I put an album out that, um, like a trap metal kind of album that had screaming in it. Maybe, maybe I can put some songs from that up on here at some point. It's the only time I've ever screamed in my music, really. There were some screams in the folk punk, too. There's a few folk punk songs that I wrote that have screams in them, too. But, yeah, screaming wasn't something I implemented too much in my own music, but I did, like, practice it and, like, fuck around with it in high school and stuff and learn how to do it. Um, at some point, I wasn't doing it properly, and I had to learn how to do it properly because I could feel, like, my voice being, like, all wonky and shit back in high school, and I had to, like stop myself from damaging my voice when it came to screaming so yeah that's a long fucking answer paul but there you go buddy i tried to give you as much as i could but there's still so many i just listed basic fucking shit that i could remember right off the top of my head uh, maybe i'll have to make a list for you guys at some point of every single artist that's ever inspired me that would be a nice video to make so there you go paul hope you enjoyed this answer so Blackfoot asks, what was the name of the very first song you wrote? And if you recorded it in some way, could we possibly hear it? The very first song I ever released that I had recorded was on the Namaste EP. Freedom is a Car Ride Away. Is what it was called. The very first bar I ever spit in my solo music career was while well, I'm 18 years old and haven't finished high school, but I honestly don't give a shit. That was my first bar. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, fuck it. If we going into this and we're going to like be a solo musician and do this independent thing and do the folk punk, I'm going all in and I'm going to tell you exactly how much of a fuck I don't give right out of the get-go. Um... 
next to bar was I spent too many years with empty bottles of beer and all these drugs that I just didn't want to quit. Think I'm going to die young, getting stuck in this town. <laughs> yeah. And then it continues. It's on my uh, my old band camp. I have a band camp that was pretty much just hip hop music, and then I had a band camp that was a bunch of folk punk music. It's on the folk punk one on the Namaste EP. Maybe I'll link it down in the description so you guys can go listen to it. This the original recording of that uh, song I mentioned. This song's for you, bitch, in the previous video about uh, addiction and the alcoholism video I made, and about following your dreams and everything like that and remembering where you came from and all that shit that I made and talked about in that video. That song is on the Namaste EP as well. And then there's Turning Blue is on the Namaste EP, which I put up a live performance of that on here from the Art Center because my first show actually does have videos from it. The songs for you, bitch, got recorded, too, at that show, I think. I'm pretty sure that that one has a video, too. It's probably in my emails somewhere. I'll have to find it. But, yeah, Turnin' Blue is up on here. And then the fourth one was Young Enough to Travel, Old Enough to Die. And the fifth song was called The Eyes of Society. And I scream in that one. There's a scream in that one. So if you want to hear me ever scream, it might not be the best song ever because it's like really folk punk and just super energy and emotion based, not like the most vocally sound thing necessarily, just very emotionally driven. But yeah, first solo song I ever recorded and released for the public to hear was Freedom is a Car Right Away, though. So thanks for that question. And then another, you gave me three. So of all the songs you have written, do you have a favorite? That would depend on the genre. First off, we would have to start with genres. And it's hard to pick one. It's really difficult to pick a favorite because every one of them is real. And every one of them is me. And every one of them is me saying exactly what I wanted to say in those moments. No matter what anyone had to think or say about it. Every song I ever wrote is the realest motherfucking thing I ever wrote. Because... I said how I felt in that moment. And even if my feelings might change later and you hear a bar later on, that's like, well, you said something slightly different earlier, but now you're saying that it's because people grow and people change. We're not supposed to be the same person forever. It would get fucking boring if I wrote the same song for three years like some other people. We'll leave that at that. <laughs> but if I had to pick favorites... With the acoustics, uh, oh, jeez. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. With the acoustic songs, I really, really fucking like Dark Knight of the Soul a whole lot. The whole Dark Knight's High Kites album, I really enjoy the whole thing. Uh, Black Hole Dreamers, easily one of my favorite songs I ever wrote. I like Black Hole Dreamers a fuck ton. Um, let me think here. Let me think of any more acoustic songs that I really liked a whole lot. Even though I got tired of being asked to play it all the time, this song's for you, bitch, will always be one of my favorite things I ever made because it was the first diss track I ever wrote. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the first time I ever, like, applied a real-life thing that I was going through and wrote a genuinely I'm mad about this right now song about it, so... Yeah, that one will always be one of my favorites just because of the rawness. Fears of a Fearless Man will always be one of my favorites because I think that it's one of those songs that talks about being a sort of scared of people and standoffish and feeling weird in social situations. And that's just something that I think applies to a lot of people even up to this day, especially now. People are really socially awkward now, so... That song's actually more applicable now than it was when I wrote it, like, nine or ten years ago. Around nine or ten years ago. Hip-hop, um, fuck, man. All of them. Because they're all just loaded with bars, and I like writing bars. When it, when it comes to a hip-hop song, 
you're just going to get bars and you're going to get me saying how I feel every time. But out of the most recent ones, I really like the Still in Shock remix a lot. I love the Still in Shock remix. I just like the clubby vibe of the beat. And I, I like the message that I had inside of that one. The new one I just put up, First Stand, has some of my favorite flow style and like rhyme pockets and skills extended schemes inside of it and even the uh the samples that i used with the talking and everything like that some of my favorite sampling that i've ever done definitely first stand which is a newer one i just put it up like a week ago or not even a week ago it hasn't even been a week i don't think um all of the stranger labyrinth songs that i've put up in like the last month or so all of those i i like the love story aspect of it and i it's very close to my heart, as you guys have come to figure out, listening to them, those of you that have listened to those ones. Um, I really like, let's see, the Infinite Remix that I did for Eminem talking about substance abuse and uh, growing up in a city that was very riddled with it and the things we saw and the way we grew up. I like the Infinite Remix. I did a whole lot. The Super Gremlin remix was really fun. I liked the bars in that one. So, yeah, but like I said, I if I make a hip-hop song, I really like it a lot every time because I just love writing bars and I like the craftsmanship of, of wordsmithing and everything. So, yeah, long answer for that one, but there you go. Lastly, what is the most interesting job I've held? Drywall. Hanging drywall was a very interesting, interesting job, and I liked doing that a whole, whole lot. I really enjoyed drywall. It was, like, different than other jobs. It's more, like, sort of laid back and chill, even though it's really hard work. But, like, you get to listen to music, and you get to, like, you can smoke cigarettes while you're working, and you get to, like, build people's dream homes. And, like, I mean, building... A large house similar to a mansion or a mini mansion, something of that size. It's a very interesting experience to watch all the walls go up on that. So yeah, that was that was a really, really interesting job. A lot of valuable information learned, even just attitude. The attitude that you have to have to manhandle something that is heavier than you most of the time. <laughs> and hold it over your head and then hold it with one hand and pop screws in it. It teaches you a lot about your core strength as a person. So, yeah, I would say hanging drywall, putting the boards up on the wall was definitely the coolest job I ever had. And I got to hang out with my dad and listen to awesome music and have funny conversations all day. So, yeah, that's my favorite job that I ever had. Thanks for your questions. I appreciate you. All right. So, Bubble Wench 42 epic username. I fuck with it. So BubbleWench42 says, who were your early influences as opposed to more current influences? We answered that one in Paul's question at the beginning, but your next part is a separate question. You said, and the growth slash change that caused the development. Now that, that's important right there. So the early influences, obviously we covered that with Paul's question. But now you want to know the modern ones and what's caused the shift and everything. The modern influences are all the artists that you see me reacting to on the channel. And part of that change was obviously you guys introducing me to a lot of Australian music first off. So thank you for introducing me to that. That's been a big inspiration on my songwriting, especially lyrically. And how to piece things together and be poetic with things and really drive home a meaning. It's a lot of influence from what you guys have showed me for certain but the change happened whenever everybody started getting offended by everything all the time and i gravitated towards what was offending everybody because i've always done that for my whole life i've always enjoyed artists that pushed the envelope and weren't afraid to take it to that extreme to say what they wanted to say like back in the day you would have had bands like rage against the machine doing that right when they were 
fucking setting up on the streets of uh, fucking political conventions and uh, causing riots and shit, right? So, like, I always gravitated towards the more rebellious and controversial things that people would object to a lot, that people would find offensive. So, when everyone around me started getting offended and pressed about certain artists, and I was like, why are these people saying this about these artists? I went and I checked them all out for myself, and I arrived where I did, and that was finding all of these independent artists that were actually speaking their fucking minds, and that inspired me to also say what I had to say and what I wanted to say, and it was there was quite a bit of division that happened inside of that, like... It it shifted my personality in ways be- where, like, at, at one point, I, like, here's just an example, not that I'm tying politics into this or trying to have a political conversation, but here's a perfect example. When Trump first ran for president the first time, I was like, I don't fucking know if I like this, and I don't think I fucking want this, and I was public about that like you can probably find a moment in time of me saying fuck Donald Trump don't vote for him (laughs) and that was back during his first run when he was first going into his first term right but by the end of the first term I was like, oh, hell no, he's better than everybody else, and he ain't even a politician. We got a businessman running this bitch, and it's better. That shifted, too. And the amount of friends that I lost over that shit. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever, bro. But, yeah, that's really the shift that happened was the social climate shifted, and I followed the music that went against the shift of everybody becoming offended. That's where the shift happens. So there you go, Bubble Wench. Thank you for your question. I appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed the answer. Next question comes from Andrew Aller. Thank you, my friend, for all your support. You've said a lot of kind words on the channel, and I appreciate you dearly, first off. So you said only one question. Given your name, what is your heritage, and where did the name come from? never heard it before and it sounds European good question that's not my real name (laughs) it's a name that was picked by a friend an old friend of mine with me we were trying to come up with a stage name whenever I was gonna play my first show she booked me on my first show and they were gonna put me as like my real name, and I was like, I don't like that, it just doesn't, like, I was like, I want something, like, neat, (laughs) so we started throwing Latin words around, like, old Latin, like, Sanskrit style language, and Vacasa and Kabi put together will roughly translate to wise traveling sage slash poet, teacher, so on and so forth, so, it was fitting because I went into this shit with a message for the world and had a fire under everyone's ass from the beginning, just ripping politics to shreds, ripping the social climate to shreds, ripping myself to shreds. I was dissing myself like no one was safe. I was fucking self-roasting at that point. Like, (laughs) so I was like, I got a lot of shit to say and those words put together sound really cool and they actually mean something in a different language. So yeah, there's your answer for that question is that it's not my real name. It's not my real name. It's a stage name. So there you go, Andrew. Love you, bud. All right. So we're going to try to rapid fire these next ones because Heidi gave us a whole list and we'll be here forever if I give super, super long answers. Luckily, these ones are quick ones because these are like fun fact kind of questions. So thank you, Heidi, for this list. I enjoy questions like this. 
first question on Heidi's list. What three things do you appreciate on a daily basis? God, sobriety, and you guys. <laughs> yep. There's that one. Next question. What are your top three personal core values? Loyalty, integrity, and keeping it fucking real. That's about it. Which is what I do when I get on here and hang out with you guys. We're loyal to each other. We're here for each other. We talk about the things that we think are important. And we have the integrity to stand behind our beliefs when it comes to what we think on the channel. We say how we feel and we keep it real. That's the three core beliefs. <laughs> and don't forget perspicacity either. <laughs> What three words would you use to best describe yourself? Straightforward, musical, and magical. What would be your dream job excluding music and YouTube? NASA. Anything to do with NASA and space. That's why I have a lot of bars about dimensions and stuff in my songs. Because I'm obsessed with fucking what's out there what can we find out about the material of this world as well so either something to do with nasa or something to do with particle physics honestly that would be my dream job outside of here is there a hobby that you have always wanted to try okay that's a good one that's a good one because I have a lot of hobbies and I've done a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> running a marathon would be interesting. Um, basketball is one thing that I always liked growing up, but I haven't played for a while. I don't really play that much anymore. So if I were to get back into something that I would used to do but don't do anymore, I would play basketball or run a marathon just for stress relief or whatever, or the experience of completing something difficult. Yeah, stuff like that, that sort of stuff, like mostly like sports activities. Mini golf, I like mini golf a lot, but I haven't mini golfed very many times in my life. So shit like that, or real golf. I haven't really ever played real golf in my life, just mini golf. So that as well, that's crazy, right? You guys wouldn't expect that from me, but yeah, tennis, tennis would be fun. I like fucking, I don't know. I just like shit like that. I think sporty stuff is fun. And like, if I had the equipment to do it, off-roading kind of shit, ATVs, Can-Ams, that sort of stuff. But I don't have those things, so I don't get to do that. But yeah, those kinds of things. Outdoorsy, sporty kinds of things. Who is your number one male and female music artist group of all time? Okay, so we're going to have to divide this up because there's sections to this. There's modern day and then there's no longer alive and then there's old school but still alive. So, right, there's like different categories to this when it comes to the eras. So, for male artists of all time, I would have to say... For me, it's a personal tie between Elvis Presley and Jim Morrison, which kind of just makes sense because Jim Morrison based his presence off of Elvis Presley. So it kind of makes sense that I would like both of them equally because one was an emulation of the other in a very much more raw fashion. Obviously, Jim was a fucking menace. <laughs> For female artists and groups of all time, um, shit. Let me think here. Stevie Nicks has to be there. Stevie Nicks, hands down, has to be there whenever it comes to the classics. Stevie Nicks, Janis Joplin has to be on there when it comes to the classics as well. I know I'm giving you more than one, but that's just so you kind of have a little bit of variety inside of this answer. Um, For modern day, modern day... I would have to say my favorite male artist now is obviously 
up church. I just think that he's really diverse and super talented and has a lot of great storytelling and feeling inside of his music. So for modern day, up church is my number one. So yeah. And for a female of the modern day, let's see. Oof. That one is hard to pick. That's a tough one to pick. I really like the Delta Good Rem stuff that you guys have showed me a lot. I think Delta has a very fantastic voice whenever it comes to the modern day female artists that are out now. Um, but yeah, if I had to just pick maybe two, it would be Stevie Nicks and Janis Joplin are my two favorites. If you could visit any place in the world, where would it be and why? Australia, duh. And you guys already know why. <laughs> but also, um, definitely Sweden, uh, definitely Norway. I would like to see Iceland. That would be cool as well. Fucking Jamaica. Could be fun to go to. Jamaica, Bahamas area. That sort of stuff. I like tropic kind of settings. I'm into like warm weather. And like beachy environments. And places with. Unnecessarily large creatures. As well. As someone who spent a lot of time. In Florida. I can tell you. That Australia would not surprise me very much, probably. <laughs> My buddy and I battled a huntsman spider in Florida once. You can't even burn those things to death. They'll just keep running around the room in circles around you. We are, you'll, you'll burn your house down before you burn the spider down. I'll tell you that. If you're trying to get a huntsman, man. Yeah. <laughs> Lord help you, you're better off just fucking finding a way to get it out the door. <laughs> I love you guys, though. Yeah, definitely Australia, though. I would definitely want to visit Australia, Jamaica, Bahamas, areas like that. Warm areas. Thought I was going to say California, didn't you? Fuck that place. What book would you recommend that left a lasting impression on you? I got three. I got three for you. Of Mice and Men. Animal Farm. And It by Stephen King. It just has a lot of like emotional lessons inside of it. If you really peel back the layers of what Stephen King was writing about in that story. When it comes to conquering fear. And becoming what can defeat the monsters. Defeating your fears. Using your <clears throat> lack of giving the fear power to strip it from the ability to harm you. But the fear is still there. It's in confronting the fear and facing it head on that it loses its power. Not because you're unafraid, but because now you are standing in front of it without faltering. And that takes the power away. Right? That self-belief takes the power away. And that's the big lesson inside of that story. That's why I list that one as well. Obviously, the other two are obvious why I would choose those two. To Kill a Mockingbird as well has very, very, very important core lessons in it too. What was your favorite TV show and movie? growing up so tv shows i watched a lot of wwf because i liked the attitude era that the wwf went through back when it was before it changed to wwe i liked that a lot i liked a lot of cartoons like courage of the cowardly dog with scooby-doo and shit like that um movie wise i liked a lot of horror movies horror movies were my thing but when it came to the Movies that weren't in the horror genre. I really liked Detroit Rock City and The Goonies. They were my favorites because Kiss was like my favorite band, basically. So Detroit Rock City is an obvious pick for that one. The Goonies I liked because of the pure rebellion and the unity of friendship inside of it. 
Stand By Me as well. Stand By Me is a fucking fantastic movie. Amazing movie. That was another one of my favorites whenever I was younger. Without a Paddle cracked me the fuck up when I was younger as well. That's another one that cracked me up a whole lot. And I just liked any horror movie. It didn't matter even if it was the stupidest B-grade horror movie ever made. I would love it when I was a kid because I just appreciated the horror genre. So, yeah, there's a few for you. What is your favorite cuisine or food? Excluding donuts. Heidi had to include. Shh, you're gonna make everybody think I'm the feds, man. <laughs> what is your favorite cuisine or food? I like burgers a lot. Burgers, chicken sandwiches. I like chicken a lot. Chicken sandwiches are really good. Mozzarella sticks. I'm I'm not like I don't eat like complicated food. I I don't go out of my way to eat complicated food. I eat really basic fucking food. Just if if I could afford to just eat steak every single day, I would just eat steak all the time. Really. <laughs> it would be the most basic fucking diet. Steak and some vegetables. And I would be set. I like snack food a lot as well. Like chocolate bars. Fucking, I have a Mr. Good bar that I have to eat. That I haven't ate yet. So, yeah. I like sweets a lot. I have a sweet tooth. I really fucking like shit like tiramisu and stuff like that. I'm I'm into like desserts. Whenever it comes to like more complicated dishes that I like, it's always a dessert and I'll eat any of them. Strawberry shortcake, one of my favorites as well. So, just stuff like that. I have a basic diet, man. I don't really eat anything too complex. I just have a sandwich or fast food or whatever. Fast food's not healthy, but I definitely eat fast food. So, tacos. Fucking tacos would definitely be a shoo-in for one of my favorite foods ever. I like tacos and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> And we have reached the end of our question, so thank you guys for sending those through. Heidi, you gave us a lot. We got to answer a lot of questions in this, so thank you guys. This was a fun one to make. I hope you enjoyed the answers. I hope you got to learn some things that were interesting. I appreciate all of your support. Thank you guys for everything. It means the world to me. Thank you for building the channel with me and building a community here where we can enjoy music and we can have important conversations with each other and learn more and grow more each and every day and just really offer something beneficial to each other's lives and encourage each other to chase our dreams, to live out our best potential, to grow more and learn more each day can encourage sobriety, we can encourage people to get help for their mental health and the things that they're dealing with in life, and just have a great time together. Thank you guys for all the support. I hope you enjoyed the video. I love you guys a lot. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys for everything. Seriously, I can't say it enough times. I appreciate you guys. I love you. Y'all have a blessed night. Peace!